This is Bobby, and you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? You know, this is some of the best news that I've heard this year when it comes to boxing news, and that is Kell Brook saying himself that he will be defending his title and facing Errol Spence next. You know, before we've heard Kell Brook's promoter, Eddie Hearn, go back and forth. One minute it sounds like the fight is going to happen. The next minute it sounds like he's going to vacate, you know, because Eddie Hearn, he'll say, oh, it's 80 percent you know, a chance that he will fight Errol Spence next. And then he'll turn around and say, Errol Spence is not a big enough name. We're looking at Manny Pacquiao. We're looking at Amir Khan. We're looking at other fighters. We're looking at moving up to 154. I'm telling Errol, Sp I'm telling Carol Brook, he should move up to 154. These were all the things that we were hearing, but we never really heard it from the horse's mouth. And finally today, we heard it from the horse's mouth. And that is Kell Brook saying, He's not giving up his belt. And I'm about to quote exactly what he had to say, but before I do, I just want to say I'm proud of Kell Brook for defending this title. You know, he was surrounded by the police, and instead of coming out with his hands up and surrendering, he's actually going to come out with guns blazing and fighting his way out the house. And that is what you're supposed to do when you are a champion. You don't just hand your belt over the way Canelo did to Gennady Golovkin. You feel me? Okay, so that's why I'm really proud of Kell Brook. This is one of the most significant fights of the year and one of the best fights of the year, hands down. And somebody is going to most likely get knocked out in this fight. Very, very competitive fight. And I feel whoever wins this fight is officially the best welterweight in the world. I truly believe that. So with, with that being said, let me go ahead and quote exactly what Kell Brook had to say. Quote, all that work just to give up? Never duck the challenge in my life. Here to give the fans what they want. Errol Spence, you are next. You know, let me go ahead and say this first in response to what Kell Brook just said right there. Now, I've already told you guys I'm proud of Kell Brook for fighting off the police. But at the same time, isn't it funny? If you notice, he said, I want to give the fans what they want. You know, before he agreed to fight Errol Spence, what was he saying before? Before Kell Brook was saying, nobody knows him. He was trying to make it seem like this wasn't a fight that the fans wanted. Before, you know, it was... Amir Khan was the fight that the fans wanted, which I'm sure, you know, the fans in the UK, they would love that fight as well. But the point I'm simply making is he tried to downplay this fight and make it seem like no one wanted to watch this fight. Which, if you've been watching my channel, I told you guys from the beginning, that's the oldest trick in the book. All that means is translation, this is a very, very difficult fight. And I don't know if the risk is worth it. That's all that meant. And Kell Brook just proved everything that I've been telling you guys since day one. He just proved it. Because as I always tell you guys on this channel, you can lock the truth up in the jail cell, throw away the key, and the truth will always find a way to break free. And today, that truth once again broke free when Kell Brook said, I'm here to give the fans what they want, okay? Now, with all that being said, you know, um, I want to close with saying this. When it comes to the UK fans, hands down, the UK fans are the best boxing fans in the whole wide world. They're the best boxing fans, and I'm going to elaborate and explain why I believe they're the best boxing fans in a minute. But before I do, I got to put those same fans on the spot right now. 
because this is pretty ironic. Whenever Errol Spence, or excuse me, whenever Kell Brook made it seem like he was leaning towards vacating the belt and trying to fight someone else, whenever it sounded like he wasn't going to defend his title, this is when a lot of the Kell Brook supporters, they would say, well, you have to understand the reason why he's going to do that is because no one knows who Kel, uh, who Errol Spence is. No one knows who Errol Spence is. And it's better for him to fight this guy or that guy, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So the point simply is when Kel Brook was making it seem like he wasn't going to fight Errol Spence next, they were justifying it by saying, oh, that makes all the sense in the world. That makes all the sense in the world that he's not going to fight this guy and he'll give up his belt and go fight someone else right but then soon as Kell Brook decides that he is going to fight Errol Spence now all of a sudden those same fans are in my comment section saying yeah aha in your face how dare you think that Kell Brook was going to duck Errol Spence etc etc all those people who thought that Kell Brook wasn't going to fight Errol Spence you guys were dead wrong this is what they're saying now but once again just a minute ago they were saying he doesn't need to fight Errol Spence. Who is Errol Spence? Errol Spence doesn't deserve to fight him. This is all about money. You know, boxing is a business, etc., etc. It just goes to show you and prove that deep down, these fans, they knew that it made sense and it was right for Kell Brook to defend his title. Just like Kell Brook just said right now, you know, give up all this hard work just to give up it made no sense it made no sense they knew this but because of their loyalty to Kell Brook they wanted to sit over here and tell people things that they knew weren't true stuff like oh it makes sense for him to give up the belt etc etc I'm telling you man I understand the psychology of boxing fans and decafs I understand the psychology and that is all this was. All this was, was a way to defend Kell Brook no matter what he did. Kell Brook could have came out and said, I'm terrified of Errol Spence. These fans would have said, oh, you know, you're taking it out of context when he uses the word terrified. That's not what he really meant. What he really meant is he can't wait to fight Errol Spence. It said, this is what they would have tried to do. Loyalty is what it comes down to. Whatever Kell Brook said, they went with it. One more time. When Kell Brook made it seem like he wasn't going to fight Errol Spence, the fans were saying, well, yeah, why would he fight that guy? Who is that guy? It makes no sense. You guys don't understand how boxing is, etc. Now he may fight Errol Spence. I told you guys. See, I told you he was going to fight Errol Spence. Why would he duck this guy? I told you. You feel me? So we know what time it is, but like I was saying earlier, with that all being said, the UK fans, they are still the best boxing fans in the whole wide world. They just wanted to show their loyalty to their fighter, and I have no problem with that. So the reason why I say they are the best boxing fans is because the UK is a lot like USA. It's one of the most diverse countries in the world. Many different nationalities living there in the UK, just like over here in the States. But the difference is in the UK, they are such real boxing fans. They don't care about the color of your skin. They don't care what other language you speak. They don't care about any of that. They are loyal to their UK boxers. This is the reason why Fighters like Amir Khan, fighters like Anthony Joshua, fighters like David Hay, fighters like Ricky Hatton, all of those guys, different colors, right? But they are all supported the same way. Well, I won't say the exact same way. Of course, some of those fighters are going to have more fans than others. But the point is, when you have David Hay fighting against a complete tomato can and he's filling up huge arenas, and he's got millions of people tuning in. That is the love for the sport in the UK. This is why I disagree with what Carl Froch said when I interviewed Carl Froch 
And I was trying to tell him, well, you have to understand, you know, in the UK, boxing is much bigger. And, you know, he gave me the stats of the population in the UK being much, lo much lower than the population in America. But you can't go off of the population. You can't go off of that because in America, boxing is not the biggest sport, number one. But more importantly, the fans that follow the sport in the United States, they base boxing off of race. Okay? They base boxing off of race. This is the reason why, once again, when Golovkin comes over to this country and he fights they root for Golovkin and they boo the American fighter. But when you go over to the UK and Golovkin is fighting against Kell Brook, the Brits are booing Golovkin and supporting their own. Okay? So that is the difference. They don't care. And I'm not saying racist people don't exist in the UK. You know, of course, racist people are everywhere. But with that being said, it's more about the sweet science for UK boxing fans. It's more about the sport. I mean, just think about this for a second. Do you guys know how big fighters like Errol Spence, Andre Ward, Guillermo Rigondeaux, who's Cuban, but Guillermo Rigondeaux, and everyone else on a coincidental list, Terrence Crawford, Gervonta Tank Davis, Shakur Stevenson, do you guys know how big they would be in the UK? Deontay Wilder. These fighters would be huge in the UK. Once again, because the UK does not base things off of race. This is why it makes no sense when you have DCAS in the States trying to justify, you know, their racism by basically saying, oh, well, it's just because, you know, Andre Ward is boring and this and that, et cetera, et cetera. Or, you know, it's because he doesn't get knockouts, but that's not true. Because even the fighters that are getting knockouts, they aren't getting praise like fighters that get knockouts in the UK. And this is how you know it's a race thing, because here you have Gennady Golovkin, who is a knockout artist, right? From a different country. Golovkin is praised more than any fighter in America. When I say any fighter, I mean any fighter in America. I mean, just imagine Filipino fans booing Manny Pacquiao and cheering for fighters from a different country. You would never see that, right? Imagine it happening in, in Mexico. Imagine fans booing Canelo Alvarez just to root for an American fighter. You would never see it. So this is the reason why I really have a lot of respect for UK fans because they keep it boxing. This is supposed to be about boxing. Not your personal disdain for a particular race. It's supposed to be about the sweet science, right? So that's pretty much um, all I got. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Once again, fantastic news. I look forward to watching this fight. Can't wait to see it. Regardless where it's going to be at in the UK, in the States, this is going to be a barn burner. And somebody will definitely get knocked out in this fight. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. You're watching Dante's Boxing Nation. Woo!